Hello everyone, and welcome to another game of World of Warships. Today's replay is from Epdulem87, and I'm terribly sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. Now he's in the Daring, E tier 10 British Destroyer. He's on the map Sea of Fortune in a 3-point domination game. And well, we got kind of a matchmaking jackpot. There's only one raider, that's a Moskva, and there is no carrier. So, he, there are three destroyers per team, he's decided to enter the B-cap. The B-cap is a little bit risky. Now, his strategy here is he's sitting here next to this island, and I guess in case of Raider, he would have decided to just reverse back into it. Now, when you try to take a cap early on, you need an exit strategy. Usually, that means either you need an island to hide behind, or you need to position a ship that you can run away very easily and quickly. Now he has moved a little bit into this camp because I guess he figured if he wasn't raided now, the raider wasn't anywhere close and he's right. A little bit after he moved forward, the Moskva was spotted over there. So he is now completely safe here and he can just chill out a little bit. He has Torps going towards this Republic, which is very aggressively pushing into the A camp for some reason. Now on the uh, right flank we see the Z-52 is behind this island, probably currently radar, uh, hydroing the gearing and the Harugomo. I mean there is also the Salem here for some radar backup. There aren't that many ships on the right flank. And honestly this set really should just take the cap. I mean with the Moskva spotted on the other end of the map that set is basically king. Yeah, the sea cap with his powerful hydro he could just sail into this cap, take it, smoke up if spotted and... There would be nothing to stop him. Now meanwhile here we see Torps going for this Republic. The Republic just kept on pushing into this cap and he just ate five Torps. It looks like a Corvus is trying to like, shoot in here. Now the Republic seems to be going down rather quickly. But Daring here is now going for some armor piercing. And it has some very nice effect, looks like. But the Republic is healing and the smoke is running out. So despite the Republic being so low, he stops here with the smoke being gone. And you know what? The Republic is going to fin uh, be finished off momentarily, probably by this force over there anyway. And there we go. So I've a little bit longer than expected, but everything seems to be fine now. Now on the other side, at the sea cap we have the set actually charging a Harugumo, I don't know why. I'm also not sure whatever stopped him from going, into, like I mean, probably was careful early on because of the Moskva. But once we knew where the Moskva was, uh, there was really nothing stopping him from taking a cap. Now the set traded with the Harugumo. Not the worst outcome I suppose, but not good either. Now meanwhile our daring here is just farming a little bit of damage here indeed. He could probably go C right now. But I guess he wants to make the best of his smoke screen here. That's running out soon anyway. And just get a little bit more damage done here. Now he could also go A, but A has the Moskva, so A is a not the greatest choice. At the sea cap we still have the Salem. There is also technically the Kronstadt whose radar should cover the sea cap, so they should be able to keep it clear of the gearing for a little bit longer. There is also an Alsace and a Yamato over there. Yamato a little bit in the back. Yamato could uh, potentially move a little bit closer, I think. But they will need a destroyer at the sea cap to actually do something. And that's where our daring is going to go. Now there's some pops going for this core first. We'll see if he has any luck with that. And I'm not sure if firing here is the best choice. Like, I mean, he fired here because there was no downside to uh, any return fire. He was behind an island shortly afterwards and the enemy didn't have time to shoot him. But he gave away his position and that means the enemy certainly is expecting pops from this direction now. Not sure what the Kurfürst would have done otherwise. But it's like, if you have Torps coming for someone and they don't know you're there, 
It sometimes is better to hold your fire and not give away your position. I mean, Ufus could also just be running Hydro and it's a moot point anyway, but... Yeah. So... The friendly team at the A cap is, well, I guess at least they're trying to move forward. They are very uninterested in the cap, it looks like, and they'd rather push down the two line. If they're at least pushing there, I guess there's some potential. Now, meanwhile, our daring has arrived at C. And the core first seems to be in retreat. That's good news. Like, I mean, the core first hydro is pretty powerful and you really want to uh, be aware of that. Like, if that core first was looking this way and pushing in, then uh, daring would have to run away. Because you can't uh, just sit there and let the core first push into hydro range. You are pretty much dead. Point. Now we have a Mr. Chusets coming this way and he has engaged Geary. Now he's deploying his own smoke screen. Um, the gearing was for a moment there no longer spotted, but like there is the Kronstadt here, so the friendlies should have radar if they need it. And the gearing has basically not much chance to escape. Enemy destroyer sunk. Now the Massachusetts is obviously aware that there is a daring and he's already trying to avoid orbs. So there are some gearing drops incoming, but I mean, Daring has the Hydro running, so no issue in avoiding those drops. I mean, they didn't even have to reach anyway, it looks like. So the smoke is going to run out, and he is probably going to have to leave now, because it looks like the Massachusetts is pushing in, and the Corvus might even follow. There is an Ibuki that's slowly coming closer. Now on the bright side, that Alsa is in a somewhat aggressive position and the Yamato is coming in here, so we have the friendly battleships meeting the enemy charge. And he got stuck here a little bit on an island, which means the Massachusetts catches up to him here a little bit, but he can't just deploy his smoke in a second. And honestly, I keep going at this point. I mean, there is the Corpus coming in and there's Massachusetts coming in. Now his torpedoes will reload before his smoke runs out, which means if he can't torpedo the Massachusetts, then he can't just escape here without a problem. And with the Massachusetts getting so close, there's a reasonable chance that he can score some nice torpedo hits. But if that Corpus gets within 6 kilometers and has Hydro, then he's screwed. I mean, not to mention that if he gets within 6 kilometers, he can't drop into concealment even if he sinks the Mus uh, Massachusetts. And then there is the problem of the bad top angles, I guess, on the daring, so he has, he has to turn a lot to top here. And now he has left his smoke and he has a problem, because he is still spotted by the Massachusetts. Now the escape is pretty close, right? He can go a little bit forward and then around the island, but the Massachusetts secondaries are deadly, and so are the core firsts. Well, especially if those guys spec for it, not to mention their main guns, and he really took a beating here. So that was very lucky to get away here alive. So, personally I would have just, like, he had an opportunity to run when he smoked. Maybe he overestimated the damage his team would do. I think the Yamato and the Alsas didn't actually have shots at the Massachusetts too. They were probably dealing with a cruiser on the side. So I just assumed that he thought they would finish off the Massachusetts sooner. But that didn't happen. But hey, he, he's still floating, he's still in the game, and he has a heal ready right now. Now that Massachusetts is still pushing forward, but obviously he went down, especially once like the Kronstadt was wisely here reversing, the Massachusetts was pushing even further in towards the Yamato and the Alsas, and that's not a firepower he could have survived for long. Now the Kurfus still seems to be around, and we can't even see him right now, because it looks like he might be hiding behind an island over there. But he should be spotted momentarily, and uh, there he is. So, still slightly outside of concealment range. And also outside of hydro range. I mean, 
don't think we've seen the Kurfürst use Hydro yet, so we don't know. I mean, I would assume he used it when he pushed in. But it's hard to say. Because we don't know when it was on cooldown and so on. So, we have some torps going for that Kurfürst. And he is... Well, he has a... A hundred meter difference here. It prevents him from getting Hydro in case this guy would be running Hydro. But you know, I think that Kurfürst problem is going to solve itself pretty damn soon. <laughs> you see the guns turning this way, he probably wanted to take a blind shot in the smoke before he goes down. But... There will be none of that. And that must feel very satisfying, considering how much damage the Daring took earlier from the two battleships, and now sweet, sweet revenge. Unfortunately, the entire friendly force at the A cap got absolutely decimated. And that leaves our daring alone with the two battleships. Now the Yamato is going to cap C, which is a very wise choice at this point. The friendlies will need the caps. Like the enemy team is slightly ahead on points. But if the friendlies can flip the C cap and hold the B cap, it should be alright. If they can also take the A cap, obviously that would give them even more leeway. There is still 7 minutes left though. And they one ship behind. Now I have no idea at which health the enemy destroyer is left. And look at that, there is a Chambard. Now, I wouldn't have expected the Chambard to sail straight for A here. I would have expected more to be down in the uh, south somewhere. And unfortunately here, the Daring got briefly spotted. So the Chambard knows the Destroyer is here, which means he will be very careful in order to avoid torpedoes. Now, the friendly Alsace is coming this way, which means our Daring here is waiting for or friendly battleship to arrive to get support there is no reason to just charge in maybe the battleship can provide some spotting and at very least provide firing spot and hydro is, hydro is actually detecting the shabbat now so the shabbat knows the daring is here the shabbat Smoke generator activated. well i mean there is no way he's just going straight ahead is there like i mean he knew the daring was here he knows he's here right now within three kilometers because of the hydro and um all right then Enemy battleship <laughs> i have absolutely no idea what this battleship was thinking um probably not an awful lot currently so uh the alsace has arrived the yamato is taking the cap over there and we have no idea where the remaining ships currently are. So it's unfortunate that the Daring is on so low hit points and that there is still a Yuki cast around. Because that's not... Well, I mean, we don't know how the, the hit points of the enemy destroyer. So if he is lucky, he'll, uh, it will be an opportunity to sink the enemy destroyer. But if he gets spotted and the enemy DD is on a lot of health, then he's just going to go down. So, uh, it looks like the Republic is spotted. I mean, technically the friendlies here could just wait for the Yamato to arrive. I mean, the Yamato was obviously delayed while capping C. And the Yamato's firepower would be very, very nice right now. Uh, I think he will soon have firing angles if he keeps going this way, but he might not be there yet. Torpedoes dead ahead. Now, if the Republic keeps pushing forward, he might just push into torpedo range of the Daring. The problem with the situation like this is, if the Alsace keeps sailing forward, he might just eat friendly torps. So, the Alsace has no reason to look this way, and oh crap, he is detected. Uh, that means the destroyer is somewhere around here and the destroyer is way too close, he can't disappear right now, the destroyer is way too healthy so he gets a few shots off and down. Now as I was trying to say before, these torpedoes are a little bit risky because the Alsace has no reason to look this way so the Alsace will never know that there are torps coming this way. But it all worked out quite well and uh, now what... We need to see is can those torps hit and the yamato yeah yamato is firing a few shells in there 
and the Alces went down. So let's just have a look at those dwarves. Well, almost. So this leaves our Yamato as the last remaining ship. So what's the Yamato going to do? Points wise, the friendlies can just win this if the Yamato survives. Now, if it just turns away now, he shows his broadside to the Republic, so if he could sink that before, that would be pretty nice. Let's uh, speed up this here by quite a lot. And yes, he actually sunk the enemy battleship. Now all he needs to do is survive, and it looks like he's aware of that. So he's currently reversing here. And I guess now he's just bailing out of here. And there seems to be some lag going on. Yeah, well, the torps, the torps missed, and that's a win. Here we are with the results. Abdullah earned himself 2,403 base experience. And he seemed to have a pretty fun game there. 256,000 points of damage and managed to land 17 hits with his torps. I mean, obviously the enemy team could have done that a little bit better. And he also got a bit lucky that he escaped that death trap against the battleships. But overall, I found it a pretty fun and enjoyable game to watch. I hope you did so too. And I'll see you guys next time.